So let's uh, conclude this with uh, again a bit of optimistic uh, a view. Uh, are there already options that are available that will allow us to reduce the emissions significantly by 2030? Yes, there are. So these are the mitigation options uh, available now in all sectors uh, which offer substantial potential to reduce net emissions by 2030. Uh, here are the relative potentials and costs that will obviously vary across countries and in the longer term compared to 2020. So we are looking at potential contribution to net emission reduction in 2030 in terms of gigaton CO2 equivalent per year. Uh, Okay, so we are looking here at costs being lower than reference uh, when it's blue or it's a various range from 0 to 20 dollars per uh, 0 to 20 US dollars per ton of CO2 equivalent uh, or uh, costs not uh, allocated due to high variability or lack of data. So looking at wind and solar, the costs are uh, lower than the reference that is used it doesn't mean it's uh, doesn't cost anything it's just that we are interested in uh, things that will cost above the reference and uh, what is the potential uh, across uh, the sectors so wind energy uh, there is the uh, range of uh, potential reductions by 2030 in gigaton co2 equivalent per year uh, so I'll just read the various ones here. Solar, uh, under energy we have wind, solar, bioelectricity, hydropower, geothermal, nuclear, carbon capture and storage, bioelectricity, uh, reduced uh, methane emissions from coal mining, reduced methane emissions from oil and gas. So these are the available options. Does that mean they are uh, all uh, implementable? Well, we have talked about the issues with nuclear, Germany completely going away from nuclear, France not doing that, geothermal not being available to everybody and CCS not being scalable yet uh, and so on and bioelectricity having other uh, issues in terms of land use, food security, water use and so on and so forth. Under agroforest, uh, agriculture, forestry and other land use uh, we have carbon sequestration in agriculture like agroforestry which is one of my favorite uh, reduced methane and N2O uh, emissions in agriculture a good no regret decision there. Reduced conversion of forests and other ecosystems again need to be protected. Ecosystem restoration, afforestation and reforestation. Uh, this is an uh, important one and there is again uh, a lot of debate about whether afforestation uh, can be a silver bullet and whether uh, also we can consider blue carbon and other things. Improved sustainable forest management, no-brainer. Reduce food loss and food waste, absolutely essential and doable. Shift to balanced sustainable healthy diets, uh, I, theoretically good and uh, accomplishable but you can see that no cost is assigned here. Um, because uh, high variability and lack of data. Under buildings you have uh, avoid demand for energy services, uh, efficient lighting appliances and equipment, new buildings with high energy performance, very easy to do, uh, on-site renewable production and use, doable, costs are there uh, at various levels so track the costs as well okay improvement of existing building stock so this is uh, about retrofitting good example of course is something like the Empire State Building in New York which retrofitted its windows and energy systems to now recover that cost so this seems often possible but there is cost involved enhanced use of wood products cost is not, not assigned and again uh, life cycle analysis kind of things may be ne needed but it does have a potential for uh, emissions reduction. Uh, in I will read these because these are generally uh, understandable and doable and important. Uh, under transport we have fuel efficient light duty vehicles already being done in the US. Trump had uh, 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 retracted some that Obama had uh, um, uh, regulated or uh, passed as executive order so now uh, Biden is going back 
electric uh, light duty vehicles shift to public transportation again good idea but not always implemented or implementable other than in places like Sweden Denmark and even countries like Brazil uh, have done better than many other countries like US will it ever go to more public transportation not so obvious shift to bikes and e-bikes again not always doable but very good idea fuel efficient heavy duty vehicles doable electric uh, heavy duty vehicles including buses already being done shipping efficiency and optimization aviation energy efficiency this is one of the more difficult ones but many good ideas are uh, being uh, uh, looked at and biofuels again uh, has many issues that have to be carefully looked at in terms of competition for land water and food um, industry energy efficiency material efficiency enhanced recycling fuel switching uh, so electric natural gas uh, bioenergy hydrogen uh, I'll have a podcast on hydrogen a new UK report says hydrogen is actually a high global warming potential so we have to be careful feedstock decarbonization process change carbon capture with uh, utilization CCU and sequestration CCS cementitious material substitution we have already discussed uh, reduction of non CO2 emissions uh, like reducing methane and N2O and uh, sulfur dioxide which is a uh, can scatter but is bad for other things and other like reduce emissions with of fluorinated gases reduce methane emissions from solid waste and reduce methane emissions from waste water so that gives you a range and looking at the uh, various mitigation options that have synergies with many of the sustainable development goals uh, some options can also have trade-offs which means there is an independent check SDGs are, have been uh, uh, being uh, uh, mandated in some ways under uh, the UN so there are 17 goals to transform our world uh, it started as Millennium Development Goals in the 20th century transition to sustainable development goals after that so there is a range here no poverty zero hunger good health and well-being quality education gender equality clean water and sanitation affordable and clean energy which gets a lot of mention as well decent work and economic health industry innovation infrastructure reduced inequalities sustainable cities and communities gets a lot of attention as well responsible consumption and production climate action broad category but still uh, life below water so protecting biodiversity everywhere life on land uh, protecting other species peace justice and strong institutions and partnerships for uh, the goals so the mitigation that is very focused on uh, global warming targets uh, is much more of a technology problem and there are related socio-technical transition issues and behavioral issues socio-cultural issues but one has to independently watch to make sure that they do not uh, have negative impacts on these kind of goals that are uh, vested in sustainable development goals okay so there is a mapping uh, of these things we looked at in terms of sector sectoral and system mitigation options uh, and see how they map on to the various uh, sustainable development goals I won't go through those but there are the 17 goals with various levels of synergy or uh, trade-offs as they are called or having no impact so they have to be carefully monitored as well so that uh, remembering that climate change is not gender neutral it affects women and children much more than men it affects poor people more than rich people and so on uh, sustainable development goals have to be pushed forward and uh, we have to watch the impact of mitigation pathways on uh, sustainable goals as well so uh, there are tons of details in these thousands of pages of reports from working group 3 on uh, mitigation and the pathways and we have uh, many independent reports from McKenzie uh, 
International Energy Agency, International Renewable Energy Agency under the UN and so on, um, that offer their own analysis as well. McKenzie also gives other details like whether net zero pathways can be beneficial for GDPs, whether it can be synergistic with poverty reduction uh, and so on. So I have a bunch of net zero podcasts uh, under uh, governing hubris and net zero uh, on this course as well so you should always see uh, how IPCC AR6 uh, IPCC reports are of course negotiated government uh, approved reports whereas McKenzie and IEA and so on are uh, independent reports that are not necessarily approved by the governments so you have to see how the two differ from each other. Does it mean that the, the AR6 pathways are uh, more likely to be implemented? Uh, maybe, but if there are market forces which like what is being proposed from other independent agencies, then maybe green technologies, renewable technologies, carbon capture and sequestration and so on can take off on their own and become economically viable uh, but then again we have to go back and make sure that those are uh, profit-driven uh, ventures uh, on mitigation are uh, compatible with sustainable development goals in terms of protecting uh, all that is enshrined in those 17 goals. Okay, so just keep these details in mind because this is a complicated issue and of course uh, optimistic view is that we have everything we need to get cranking on reducing emissions by 2030 and there are many new innovations needed as well along the way. Okay.